So my name's Paul, and I'm a photographer. And what I'm going to tell you tonight is really brought to you by three people. A Mexican, Don Jose Antonio de Cuervo, uh, the Chancellor, George Osborne, and my mum. <laughs> Go back to April 2009. This is just over five years ago. This is me. Um, and I'm looking at myself. I'm taking a look at myself because things are not going very well. That's a very puffy face. That's not a well person. Um, like a lot of people, I'm in a job which isn't fitting my skin. Uh, and to be blunt, I'm a drunk. And that's where the Mexican comes in because Don Antonio, Don Jose Antonio de Cuervo, of course, is famous for producing this. And this is something that you probably have in your bar or in your, your, your drinks cupboard at home. Um, I had it in my wardrobe. And I had it down the side of my desk. And when I went to bed at night, I couldn't go to bed without a little kiss from Don Jose. So that's the puffy face you see. That's somebody who's not fitting and it's not going well. And on the 30th of June, 2009, this is about this is 1,849 days ago, All right, yeah, that's right. Um, I decided this could not go on, and it would not go on, and I woke up on the 1st of July and said that today I will not have alcohol, and for 1,850 days, that's been true. So, thank you, Doc. <laughs> okay. But, straight away, 2nd of July, I'm straight into the, the Lincoln's Inn Barristers Summer Party. Unlimited champagne. Somebody is <laughs> testing me, okay? Nobody knows. I haven't even told my, I haven't told my wife, I haven't told my family that I've, done, that I've made this decision. And I'm begging the guy at the pimp stall to give me lemonade with fruit in it. Because I, so clearly, you know, I'm a shaking mess. I've got to find a better coping mechanism. So I look around me, what can I use to cope? A camera. A camera. Um, a year before, in that stage of your life, when you buy all the toys because you think they'll fix your head, I bought a camera because it was a toy I didn't have. And money wasn't the issue, but another toy. I didn't know how to use it. I took terrible pictures, but I kept this thing with me. I took pictures um, uh, wherever I went, and I shared them online. And um, very blessed to have a great network, lots of friends. The pictures started to get appreciation and feedback, and they were just, you know, just snaps, parties. But it was me going to a party, instead of drinking my hand, have a camera in my hand, take a picture, share it. And the love came back to me, and soon offers came back. You know, Paul, will you come to a party? Will you, will you, yeah, we'd love to have you at a party. Will you bring your camera? That's really nice. And it's just no more than just a bit of fun, really. But it was keeping me sober and keeping me sane to have the camera there. It was something to, to give me some, some value, really. Because it can feel very lonely when you're the only sober person in a big party. Uh, anyway, took the pictures, started getting offers. Yeah, maybe just sometimes we can give you 50 quid for your expenses. We can pay a little fee. This is lovely. So without realizing it, I'm just sort of becoming of a shift is happening. Shift is happening. And that it's not really anything I'm controlling. Um, and then the second person I want to thank is this gentleman here. It's Mr. Osborne. Because in April 20, I think, uh, Steve, you were at this event. 20, April 2010, March 2010? 31st of March 2010. So we were in the same room, and I'm doing my thing of going to things. Um, used to go to them for the free booze, and I'm going to them for the, for the interest. And I took this, this rather unflattering and not particularly good picture of the Chancellor, but the reason he's up here is because in May he came to power, and him and Francis Maud and Andrew Lansley demolished my career. I used to... I was, the the, the ill-fitting job I was doing was um, technology advice to government. It wasn't particularly good advice, and it, was very, <laughs> and, it was, and it was very expensive, and it didn't fit anymore. Within nine days of the election, the big glamorous project I'd been working on at the Department of Health uh, to review the whole of the NHS on the web, gone, out, no more work. So I'm nine months sober. Uh, no career, everything I've worked for for about 18 years, all my expertise. I could, at that point, have gone into the civil service and taken that route. My life would have been very different. Or I could use it as an opportunity to shift in a different direction. What else can I do? What else can... Oh, maybe I can take a picture. So a little nudge from, from, from George there. Thank you, George. Um, third person that's 
important here. This is taken in the same month as the picture of George. This is me and my mum. My mum was diagnosed with cancer in January 2010. I'm going to dwell hugely on that year, and, uh, and she died later in the year. Um, but it's really interesting, the relationship we have with our parents. I suspect all of us have had some moment where we've thought about parental approval or disapproval, filling a model that your parents said they expect you to do. Did they expect you to go into a profession, to be in a suit, to do a job? Did they expect you to be a creative, a photographer? Christ, no. But when mum died, this is a picture I took of her about a week before she died. It's the last picture I have. I won't say it was a release to do a passionate thing, follow a creative route. But something had shifted, something had changed there. I wonder if perhaps the last gift that a parent gives you when they leave you is a real message that nothing is permanent. The thing you thought was most permanent, your mum, your dad, they go. So nothing's permanent. So nothing has to be cast the same for the rest of your life, the rest of your career. So thanks, Mum. There was some liberation there, a really odd way. One of the things I love about the, the recovery process, and, and that's a talk for another time about how that happened, but the idea of taking things simply and the promise that if you follow simplicity that good things will happen and indeed you'll get what you need. Crazy things started happening. About um, the week, this is two weeks after Mum died, I'm in the green room at BBC Breakfast TV on TV talking about my moustache, which I've grown for Movember. Now this is a kind of weird thing for somebody who'd been a Deloitte management consultant, um, sort of sitting in a studio with Bagpuss. Uh, and of course I took my camera with me because my camera's going everywhere with me now. And Peter Furman, who created Bagpuss, was very kind enough to pose for the picture. And you can even see Bagpuss is talking to me there, his mouth's moving. Um, and it, you know, the same room is, is, is uh, uh, Bill, what's his name, from the uh, San Francisco Police Force. Uh, there's a whole load of interesting Aston McGowan sitting on the sofa. I'm talking about a moustache on TV with Dick Strawbridge. My life's starting to go very, very interesting. So <laughs> I just run with it. I just run with it. It's happened. I was in, I was in Parliament the day before at a digital economy meeting. Somebody said there's a tweet from the BBC. Has anyone got a November moustache? Wants to go on breakfast TV tomorrow? But me! <laughs> so the kind of me, yes, I can do that attitude started to creep in. This mouse is frozen now. Okay, so on, on I go. Um, I'm taking pictures wherever I go. I'm slightly obsessive. This took me three hours in, a, in the south of France in a storm. I wasn't going to stop taking pictures until the lightning hit the castle. <laughs> and it did, after three hours. If it had taken 13 hours, I'd probably... So I, again, so, you know, I'm, I'm just capturing things around me and I'm starting to get a suspicion that maybe, just maybe, by trying and trying and trying at this, I might actually be quite good at it. I might be good at this, this creative thing, this thing that anybody can do, just picking up a camera. But I needed a big break. I needed something that was going to take me from just holiday snapper, party snapper, to something else. And bizarrely enough, I got a phone call from Mr. Steve Moore in February, very beginning of February 2011. He said, uh, doing a little event at Somerset House, uh, will you snap it for us? It's the Prime Minister. <laughs> I'll tell you, Steve, now, and I haven't told you this before, I had no idea what I was doing. I really didn't. I, you know, I could take a good picture of a party, but this is, this is the full thing. This is Nick Robinson in the corners. This is the full cameras. This is the whole shebang. This is the relaunch of the big society. And I decided to do it my own way. I did not do what press photographers would do and stand in the same places. I did a creative take on it. I used a really abstract lens here. I took a shot, which you would not normally see. Safe to say, it went quite well, and I had a big break, and I suddenly had a portfolio of extraordinary people, I just in balance, in balance. But by, um, <laughs> by, November, by November that year, despite taking that picture, by November that year I'd, been, uh, I, I'd managed to wangle myself to be the official Labour Party um, new media photographer for the conference in Liverpool. So I spent four days taking pictures of the Labour Party, access all areas. Life is starting to shift and transform in the most bizarre ways. Uh, I travelled, I travelled, oh, not quite the world, I travelled to different places. I found images that pleased me uh, and seemed to please others. Uh, I took a train around 26 countries in 18 days last July, 
26 capital cities in 18 days by train. Just let that sink in. And this is the bridge. That, this is the bridge of the bridge. I think as you go from uh, from uh, Denmark to Sweden, um, and you know little things like this. But finding things which are starting to, to sort of allow me to tell my story. This is the sort of work I do now. So working with people. This is a little event I shot in the uh, Department of Health. Um, Funny, isn't it? Department of Health coming around again. This time I'm back in there <laughs> as the snapper, just finding that moment where the co-chairs of, uh, uh, of a, uh, a, a disability campaign are, um, shall we say, sharing each other's sense of humour. <laughs> um, stuff like this is happening. I'm Elia Fox at the V Inspire Awards. Just, I love action. I love the moment. I love the, there's nothing makes you feel more alive and in the moment than shooting an event. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, so. Where do we go? I started to interpret London in my own way. I remember, again, Steve, you remember this one. Um, this is, you know, last summer, just, just finding that place when London's bizarre weather tells its story. This became, um, th I'm just going to show you three big pictures now, which kind of really showed that things were taking off. This, in April last year, became, I'm pretty sure, the most viewed photo on the internet that wasn't on a news site. Okay, it was the most viewed image on Flickr, which is one of the most popular image sites. Um, it went completely viral. It was in the newspapers. The newspapers bought it on the Monday. Um, this, I was, up in, I was up in Canary Wharf to do a shoot with Boris. Uh, he was doing an event up there. I turned around, saw a storm coming in, took a quick shot out the window, and boom. I mean, this, this may projector maybe doesn't do full glory, but it's kind of stuff like that was just happening to me, just happening to me. So... Lots and lots of luck, lots and lots of dedication. All I ever wanted to do with the photo business was be faster and better than everybody else. And I still do. And that's what I do. I got lucky again. I got a commission to shoot the um, Prince of Wales. That's him. That's Charles underneath the bearskin in the centre in the courtyard of Buckingham Palace last summer. Um, you know, I've really, I've been doing this, what, two years, three years since I sent out my first invoice? Um, I'm doing a Royal Portrait Commission in the courtyard of Buckingham Palace. I'm immensely privileged. And, you know, you wouldn't believe the hassle trying to keep the horse's head straight and, and shouting at uh, Prince of Wales to, if he could kindly control himself. Um, so these are big things. And then, and then, and then, and then in April, um, th this, is, this is a fascinating picture, really. This is from a wedding. But I entered it into a competition um, for Event Photographer of the Year. It's a new competition for the, in the events industry, sponsored by one of the big uh, magazines in the event industry. Um, I don't really do competition. I'm not very good at being judged, putting my stuff out there. Uh, but I stuck some pictures in. I figured out, as an event photographer, because I'm kind of having to accept that that's now what I am, that I'd probably better enter into it. And it's free to enter, so thousands of people entered. Uh, I won. I won the professional category with this picture. Um, of three squaddies at their mate's wedding, just cracking up while he makes his speech. You know, it just that, God, who knows, I don't know. Um, I had a lot of help from people to choose that. I put 50 out there on my networks and got, got the crowd to help form that and shape that. And unanimously, everybody wanted this one to be in the entry, so. So, shift. It's a few different shifts there. There's the obvious shift of being a government management consultant to becoming a photographer. There's a shift from being someone with two parents to someone with one, what that meant. Shift from alcoholism to sobriety. And a bigger shift around a shift around the way networks and crowds were helping and able to help me make that change. Um, even bigger shifts in the whole dynamics of the way that government works. This is all happening in the backdrop. So I didn't make any shift. It was happening all around me. I just participated. I, I was open to some of the things that were happening and lucky enough to float along with all of that. And I went from this guy to, to this guy. <laughs> and that's a job I was doing. That's me doing what I love most, shooting a big event in Tate Modern last month. Um, yeah, five years. Uh, fit, happy laughing my head off, having an absolute bloody blast. So that's it. So I mean, you know, a couple of thank yous along this journey. Um, thank you to Don Jose as your representation of the alcohol industry and the madness it came, it took me to. Thank you, George and Francis Moore and Mike Bracken and all the other people that shifted my career world upside down and left me seeking other routes. Thanks, Mum in a kind of weird way. You wouldn't have believed what happened after you went. You wouldn't believe it. 
And that's how I feel. That's my boy. That's my son. Brighton Seafront, that's how the world feels now. So having come from that period of reflection five years ago to bloody living it and loving it. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>